What's next, Big Co? <laughs> Funny you should ask. Got one loaded up in the chamber for you here. <laughs> Old Leonard Fournette's next. Uh-oh. Yeah. Gonna do a little seven minutes in heaven on that guy. Leo. I don't know if we should call the seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> It was funny the first time. Hit the button. <laughs> oh, All right, seven whoa, minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. No question yet. No question yet. It goes ready to hit the button. We're going to start with the general general question of just kind of, are you still into Leonard Fournette? A lot of, lot of people out already. I'm, I just want to see if you guys are. I just feel like I had a lot of time last time. I really settled in. Like when Kramer repainted the lines on the interstate and you had went just from three lanes, had, had two big lanes, and he just had plenty <laughs> of room just to sway back and forth. You know, that seven minutes really didn't heat up the collar too much for me last time. That's how they all drive in the movies. They're, just, they're working that steering wheel back and forth. It's like, you don't drive like that. Well, what? it drains me, and it gets me so nervous. Is you're not watching the road. I'm like, is this Ever. every time? Every time. Only, only once, one out of 150 times did they actually get in a wreck. But every right. time, I'm like, dude, you got to be getting in a wreck. Right? Cousin got, Kill got, got stuck under a gas, gas truck. I, I, an observation story? that I've had. I ride around with my dad a lot because we work together. <laughs> Old Older people in his generation, that, that, as soon as that phone rings or anything happens on it and they have to do something while operating a motor vehicle, it's it, it's impossible. Like nobody should be texting and driving or doing anything in driving. But once that generation has something going on with this phone, they're already awful with the phone. And then this happens. <laughs> and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm, I just, I'm like, oh, my God. Put it down. Put the fucking phone down. This is like, hand it over. Yeah, he's he's just trying to swipe and he can't get it to swipe. And he's I can see him looking down and he's usually a great driver, but all of a sudden I'm very concerned with what's going on. Uh, you can't multi. They're just not a great multitasking generation. They just what they with their one, hands. They had, they, one, they had one thing going on back then. That's what they were focused on. Yeah. yeah, they didn't grow up with this something is, to do. Just a I feel like there's a good bit somewhere they in there. They grew up Somebody with a stick and a that. ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, you, can yeah. Old people and technology, you know. Dominoes and marbles. <laughs> Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, Great generation. Leonard Fournette. Le- Leonard Fournette. <laughs> He's that old, old-timey old uh, kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. How do you feel about Leonard Fournette? Still seven in. minutes. Here we Seven minutes shot clock. Here we go. Hit and start. Who wants it first? We're running out of time. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. All right. Tick. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll, you know what? I'm, I'm in. I'm still in. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get off of Leonard Fournette. There's, You're an idiot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Whatever. He has had a little ankle injury. He, the, the, a little. It's, it's lingered for a little while. But the first thing you got to get to is, it seems like maybe at the end of the season here, we're gonna just do with some coach speak and some, all that kind of jazz here. Did say he realizes he needs to take this a little bit more seriously. Get the weight in check, and I think all that, and and be in better shape and condition coming into next year. And you met with Coughlin, taking all that into consideration. I think that would drastically improve the injury situation and his overall general shifting. It. We know he's a pretty good guy or pretty fast guy. So I think I think all that together could be a nice thing moving forward with Leonard Fournette. And if he, if he really does take it seriously, I think he's a force to be reckoned with. I know it hasn't been super great, but RB thirteen. Um, the grade has been great, right? Mm-hmm. RB thirteen with points per game. He averaged fifteen point five uh, points a game in PPR. I mean, that's pretty solid. Only played eight games, I know, but twenty two receptions on twenty six targets. So for all the people who, well, these guys can't catch balls. If you would have put that across the season, that's he would have caught a shit ton of balls. Fifty two would have been plenty of balls. I know he didn't go over a hundred yards rushing in any game. Targets. Let's let's talk about the. Oh yeah. Let's talk about the. Uh, O-line situation here. It was awful. The QB situation ended up awful. The whole team was just in the dumpsters, just garbage. Cam Robinson, uh, offensive lineman, ACL, IR. Jeremy Purnell on IR week 11, 12, or not. He didn't go on IR then, but he missed week like 11, 12, was back in like 13, missed 15, 16. You had Jeremy Linder, IR with an ankle, I believe. Norwell, who was the huge free agent pickup. Injured IR. At one point, they had used four different left tackles due to injury. Like this line was decimated, devastated with injuries. So there really wasn't a, a huge fair shake on the running game of what was going on in Jacksonville. If, if you can get a quarterback and all these guys are signed in for another, at least another year here in Jacksonville, they should, by all intents and purposes, have a pretty solid offensive line and be able to play. A little Smash Mouth football. Exotic Smash Mouth? Is that a drink? Yeah. In the seven minutes? I'll jump in here since you guys are drinking on your Exotic Smash Mouth. 
Do you, we have definitely seen in the last couple of years uh, offensive lines fluctuate between injuries and this and that, and we know how that can derail an offense quick. Obviously, Blake Bortles derailed his own offense. You, I don't think the locker room divided. I don't think the offensive in, the offensive line injuries got enough play because there was so much other cr- craziness to talk about for Jack with Jacksonville last year. So I think a lot of those offensive line injuries probably went under the radar. Um, I mean, I, a lot of people are hating Leonard Fournette right now, and that just means it's a great buy low window. I mean, I don't know how, but not everybody's. Every single league is different, and if you play in normal leagues, there's only one person on it if, if these there's two, no copies two copy leagues are becoming popular if there's one leonard fournette in your league he may or may not be held by somebody who's going to sell him low but on average it seems like everybody's hating on leonard fournette right now i think it's a great buy low window for him right he peaked in the bottom end of the first round about 12 uh 12th pick overall 12 5 so bottom end of the first round uh, top of the second. Now he's all the way down to 34 and a half. He's picked 33 on DLF right now. Uh, so there's definitely a window of him. This is the lowest he's ever been by far. He's just fallen, fallen down a cliff. A lot of hate out there for him because he can't stay healthy and he's not this and he's not that. And running backs are no are useless and all that jazz. But I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll re up and I'm going, I'm going back in on on some Leonard Fournette. Yeah, I don't, uh, I can't bail on him now. I mean. There's definitely some guys that in the past I wouldn't have taken over him that I now have to take over him. You know, sure. I'll take Carry on over over Leonard Fournette. Uh, I'll take Dalvin Cook over Leonard Fournette. But I think Darius Geis and you know a couple other guys make me question. I'm not sure. Like I'll t- I think I'll take Leonard Fournette over Geis. That's a hard call for me. I'm I'm undecided. I I could easily take Geis. I could easily take Fournette. That's a tough. Uh, if I'm on the clock and those are the two guys so, I'm looking so at, it's gonna be a very tough call. Fournette just turned 24. Geis will be 22 before the season. So a decent two year age difference between the two. Now the one thing I will say is, and everything that Casey said is, if Leonard Fournette comes true to his word and takes his conditioning right. seriously, like we, I I made a big deal about how big of a dude he was and what he was doing with his body on the football field as far as the the actual amount of agility that he did have for being such a big man and the um, acceleration that he had for being such a big man. If he that I don't want to, and we're in the middle of the third round here, or no, we're at the end of the second. Is that no, no. Mid, end of the third? End of third. Thirty six is three twelve. So you're at the end of the third round. It's tough to take a guy as much as I I just said it's a buy low window in a startup in the third round taking a guy that I got an if on I, I we've seen him do crazy good fantasy football points production and not even necessarily be in the best shape of his life if yeah. there's a I hate to draft a guy that early sure. that has an if but we know the we've already seen what we would think is a ceiling and it's fantastic and yeah. if it can get better than that then he'd be right up there in the second into the sure. first round again next year well, if, he, if the there's if certainly is, is a hang up there's certainly guys around there that i would pot, I, i'd probably go carry on and i might go guys over four net but you know robert woods give me give me four net um galladay probably four net maybe the tight ends Ertz and kittle i could go in on potentially depending on how my other two first picks went yeah um, right um I'm definitely taking carry on first. It's hard for me to buy Woods this high because I really right. racked up on him Agreed. low last year. Yeah. It's really hard to buy Woods in the third round because I crushed the Robert Woods intake last offseason. All right, one more question. So let's go. If we had the one one, forty seconds. Would you would you go one one for for Fournette? I think in a startup, Fournette's going to go before any rookie off the board. It's hard right now looking at that one one. It's hard to swap Fournette for that one one, but I think at the end of the day, Fournette's more valuable than whoever is that one one. We talked about some Fournette Patreon questions, um, trade questions. There's more of that over there, but yes, I'll 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 give up the one one to get Leonard Fournette. We said it on the show. If he was a if, if he, he was, was the a, rookie running back, he would be the one one. Right, most if he likely. was coming out this year. I've seen him in the league. He he can play. You, well, the one thing I will say, I would probably give up the one one. The one thing that I will say is that I'm going to get buzzered here. Mm-hmm. Hit me with the buzzer. <laughs> Seven minutes is up. <laughs> is that when he did come into the league, he, he there was that quote of him playing the Patriots or was saying this is he didn't think it was going to be this easy. Well, maybe he got checked a little bit and now realizes, hey, I, if he if he can get it together, you could have he could still be really productive and still be an asshole. But if he really got it together, he could be shoot his ADP back up in that 
you know, end of first round, early second round. I'll, if you hit on your first two picks and you get Leonard Fournette in a startup, and if he comes out there and crushes, you could be steamrolling mm-hmm. cats. Absolutely. He you could he could be a first round type running back in a startup, and you get him into third. 